Hi Vintage Bakers! Today I'm going to share my grandmother's favorite peach pie recipe that will have everyone asking for seconds and it's easier than you think. This peach pie recipe is packed with fresh sweet peaches surrounded by a creamy sugary filling and baked inside a golden flaky crust. Some peach pies can be overly sweet or lack richness, so in this recipe we're going to mix in a sweet and tangy sour cream layer. This is going to elevate its flavor and texture to a whole new level. Today I'm excited to share a mouth-watering sour cream peach pie recipe that's sure to impress your family and friends. So let's get into the kitchen. This is how I make a rich and creamy peach pie. To start this recipe we need to make a rich and flaky crust. If you already have a store-bought crust then go ahead and skip to the filling. I'm going to make this pie crust quickly and easily in a food processor, but I'll show you after how to make it with no equipment at all. Add in two and three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Pulse this a few times to mix. Now I have some cool butter and I need to cut one cup into little cubes, about one centimeter, but no need to measure. If you've noticed here that I'm cutting more than one cup, it's because I'm making a double recipe. I'm going to crack and lightly beat one egg and then get ready five to six tablespoons of cold water mixed with a half a tablespoon of vinegar. With the food processor on low, drop the cubes of butter through the funnel. Stop the machine as soon as the one cup of butter is in. Now to bring the dough together. With the food processor on low again, Pour the one beaten egg through the funnel along with the half tablespoon of vinegar and finally the five to six tablespoons of cold water or enough for the dough to hold together. You may need all or part of the water. As soon as the dough forms a clump, stop the machine. And the dough is made, so quick and easy. Now form it into a disc, wrap in plastic wrap and allow the dough to rest in the fridge for one hour. Now, if you want to make this without a machine, it's almost as easy, just a little more work on your part. In a large bowl, add the flour, salt, baking powder, and sugar. Give it a mix. Drop in the cubed butter and toss it in the flour, just so it doesn't stick back together again. Using your fingertips, or you can use a pastry blender if you have one. Crumble and rub the flour and butter through your fingers until you have a crumbly oatmeal-like consistency. Add in the beaten egg, the vinegar, and some of the water. Press and clump the dough together with your hands. Don't knead the dough like you would for bread. You're more just squishing the dough together. Add enough water for the dough to form. Tip the dough out onto the counter and form into a disc. Wrap in plastic wrap and let it rest and chill in the fridge for one hour. Now that my dough is ready, I'm going to roll it out and line my pie plate. Glass and metal pie plates work the best for this recipe because they heat up quickly in the oven. The porcelain or silicone pie plates take a longer time to heat up and the crust won't come out crisp on the bottom. I'm going to roll the dough out on a floured countertop, turning and moving it around often to make sure nothing is sticking to the counter or the rolling pin. You can reapply a dusting of flour as needed. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the bottom of the pie plate. This will make sure the dough doesn't stick and the slices of pie come out easily when it's time to serve. I'm going to set this aside to chill while I make a quick and easy peach pie filling. I have nine fresh peaches and I'm going to peel and slice them. Peaches are in season right now where I live, so these are going to be super fresh and juicy. When peaches are quite ripe, the skin comes off pretty easily with just a knife. If you have peaches that are not quite ripe enough, score the bottom of each with an X. Then parboil them for about 30 seconds and toss them in ice water. The skin should peel right off. You can make this recipe with frozen peaches by cooking them down on the stove top first to remove all the added moisture. Make sure if you're using this method to allow the peaches to fully cool before adding them to the crust. 
For the creamy filling, I'm going to add one cup of full fat sour cream, a half a cup of sugar, and one third of a cup of flour to a medium bowl. Blend this together with a whisk or a fork. Now that my peaches are sliced, I just need to arrange them into the bottom of my pie shell. And now I can spread the sweet tangy cream on top of the peaches. Using a spoon or a spatula, just smooth it out to cover the fruit. This is going to give the top of the pie a lovely smooth creamy layer when it's baked. And that is it! The pie is ready to go into my preheated 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius oven and cook for 15 minutes. Remove from the oven and sprinkle on top a quarter cup of brown sugar. At this point you could also use some of the leftover dough to make a decorative top to your pie. I just used some festive cookie cutters that I'm going to arrange on top of the pie and press onto the crust. But this step is optional. If you want any top crust decorations to have a glossy golden finish, make sure to brush it with an egg wash before going into the oven. Turn the oven down to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius and continue to cook the pie for another 30 to 35 minutes or until the crust is golden and the sugar has started to melt into the cream. And here is the finished peach pie masterpiece. You've created a delicious dessert that balances sweetness and creaminess, making it a standout pie for any occasion. You can make this dessert even more decadent by adding a generous dollop of whipped cream or rich vanilla ice cream. Enjoy! If you're a fan of deliciously simple vintage recipes and old-fashioned skills, then you'll want to check out this next video. Thanks for stopping by.